came in like a missile, like a fireball missile across from the New York Harbor side, I guess in the north direction. It came in like a spear, just speared through the building like a fireball. I've never seen more up close, but today I have. It's just this sound, this rumble. Mass cloud coming at us. It's intense. Amen. It was my burden to, to, to help us see that we have a sin problem, right? Because Ezekiel began by saying what? Because of your transgression, right? It says, because you have made your iniquity to be remembered and your transgressions are discovered, right? That's the reason for them going into captivity, sin. And because of sin, they lost the priesthood and they, and they lost the, 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 the nation, Amen? Because when you go in Deuteronomy, God told them, I will make you a nation of kings and priests. Right? That was his goal all the time. They were to be a shining example of what religion was to be in the earth and what government was to be in the earth. Right? But because of sin, the Lord had to put them into captivity. All right? So now we're on page 11, I believe. Um, 12, yes. Top of page 12, the heading is the time of the end. In Education 179, Sister White says, that time is at hand. All right, brethren, and for what we've been doing for all these nights, right, I, I, I know that this may seem out of context, but it's not, because the time of the end is at hand. Amen? Amen. That's what it says. It says, that time is at hand. Let's keep reading. The present time is a time of overwhelming interest for some living, for all living, rulers and statesmen who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes have their attention fixed upon the events taking place about us. They are watching the strained, restless relations that exist among the nations. They observe the intensity that is taking possession of every earthly element and they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place and that and the world is on the verge of a stupendous crisis. All right, that's the condition of the world. And she says, that time is at hand. When she wrote that, she was alive. Well, that time is here because in 19, what does she say? We are living in the time, time of the end. The fast fulfilling signs, right? And she goes on and she tells us what those signs were. Let us continue. SDP 209.5. This is a beautiful principle, guys. Amen. This one. It says, students very often read the story of nations. Remember she just said that all the world is looking at what? The at the nations. All right? Students very often read the story of nations, forgetting that they have before them a what? a picture of their own lives. Amen. National history, rather than individual experience, is given in prophecy because it is like a what? Magnified, Magnified view thrown on a canvas revealing details that would be overlooked in the study of one man. Amen. It should be remembered that when what? Principles when what? Person. When what? Keep that in mind. Principles are referred to such as republicanism, Protestantism, monarchy, papacy, liberty, or oppression. Each has an application in man dealing with man, 
in church members dealing with one another and in nation dealing with nation. Exactly. So prophecy covers all. Amen? Even though prophecy is on a national level, it's really only designed to show you the local level. And there's a reason for that. He said it's hard to study a man. You know one of the reasons it's hard to study a man? They die. Right? They die. You may not live close to them. Right? So what does he do? He, he gives it the nation, the characteristics of a man. And on that level, now you can see yourself. That's the point. The point is to see yourself. So Daniel 11, 40 to 45 is about whom? It's about you. This is what the Lord wants us to see. Yes, we see the papacy. Yes, we see friends. But that's not, the Lord wants you to see you. Okay? And so for the rest of this study, we'll go through it looking at ourselves. Looking at Daniel 11, 40 to 45 um, concerning the sin question. Because that's what it's about. Amen? Amen? And to those of you watching online, just a reminder, at 425 this evening, uh, Central Time, amen, we'll be back here for a question and answer. So please feel free to write your question down and prepare yourselves to, 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 to fellowship with us in that manner. So let us continue. Daniel eleven forty 40 to 45. It says, And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a, like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. This, my friends, is a war in your mind. All right? This is a war in your mind. Let us continue. The king of the south. What is the king of the south? Exodus chapter 5 and verse 2. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let. So there is one thought in your mind telling you that you don't know the Lord. Everyone following? Yeah. All right. Continuing on. Ellen White says in GC uh, 69, paragraph 2, this is what? Atheism. Okay? She quotes Pharaoh, and then she says, this is atheism. What's the other thought? King of the north. It says, for thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will bring upon Tyrus, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, a king of kings from the North. Revelation 17 and verse 5, the Bible says, And upon her forehead was written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. That's the other thought that is pressing the mind. Amen? Let us continue. Let us read GC 382. Sister White tells us, The woman, Babylon, of Revelation 17 is described as arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abomination and filthiness. Upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Says the prophet, I saw a woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of martyrs. Babylon is further declared to be the great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. The power that for so many centuries maintained despotic sway over the monarchs of the Christian of Christendom of Rome. What is, what, what is Babylon? They maintain what kind of sway? Despotic sway over what? Over the kings. Amen? Atheism is a religion of the flesh. Right? I'm not saying Catholicism is not, but the point I want to make, Catholicism tries to rule the mind. Atheism attacks the flesh. Right? But let us continue. Because atheism generally leads to what? Infidelity. Homosexualism. What else? Murder. I mean, they're one and the same, right? North and South, right? They, they come, though, in different ways. One appeals to God and the other don't. Yeah. Right? That's kind of the main difference. One appeals to God, the other doesn't. No God, right? So let us continue. It says, The purple and scarlet color, the gold and precious stones and pearls, vividly picture the magnificence and more than kingly pomp affected by the haughty sea of Rome. 
and no other power could be so truly declared drunken with the blood of the saints as that church which has so cruelly persecuted the followers of Christ. Babylon is also charged with the sin of unlawful connection with the kings of the earth. It was by departure from what? From the Lord, an alliance with the heathen that the Jewish church became an harlot. And Rome, corrupting herself in like manner by seeking the support of worldly powers, receives a like condemnation. condemnation. Atheism says, I'm my own person, I do what I want, nobody tells me anything. Catholicism says, I rule everyone. Everyone's following? There's, there's a lot of principles we could get from these two powers. But the point that I'm making is, those two things are battling for supremacy of your mind. At the same time, Christ is battling for supremacy of the mind. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, PTUK, the present truth. It says, why will not Protestants see that what? Popery is the natural religion of what? Brethren, that's our heart. Amen? Amen? So when we come into this message, that's the time of the end. Amen. Amen? And the Bible says, at the time of the end shall the king of the what? South push. And the king of the north will come back. And you will have that battle in your mind. Unless you give the true king of the north place, that's your life. Unless you give Christ the throne, until he comes, who's? Right, right. These two things will battle until Christ comes, who's right it is. Amen. And if you don't give it to him, they will destroy you. They both end in death. French Revolution, yeah. death. 1260, yeah. they both end in death. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let us continue. So in 1798, this is my note. The atheistic spirit ruled the minds of men. Amen. All right? Men became extremely uh, 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 proud of their reason. So what did the Lord introduce in 1798 to curb that reason? The Bible. The Bible. Amen? The Bible. But when you come to 1989, who rises up? The, the other spirit. Right? Popery rises up. Popery claims to follow the Bible. So what can't the Lord really use to assert? I'm not saying he can't, but what, what, what does the Lord need? Popery is a spirit. So what does the Lord need? You need a new spirit to battle that system. Amen? So the Bible was given back to God's people, and the spirit that we lost from the disciples is going to be given back to us in this time. Amen? Right? And if we're faithful, using the Bible and the spirit of prophecy, the what? The spirit of prophecy, we will gain the victory over the north and the south. The false north and the false south. Amen? Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, these things are not difficult. Amen? Amen. All right. I, I, I'm, just keep me in prayer. So, verse 41. Verse 41. Remember, this is the battle for your life. The Bible says, and he shall, enter also, he shall enter also into the glorious land, and what? Many. Many shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. What is the glorious land according to the scriptures? Now I know we have a definition for it from the time of the end magazine, right? And this is teaching us that he's going to enter into the United States. But again, this is about you. So how are you the glorious land? What makes you the glorious land? Your mind. Amen. Let us read. Let us see what the scripture Psalms 133, verses 1 and 2. It says, Behold, ah, before I preface that, well, another name for the glorious land is the pleasant land. Okay? So now let's read. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for what? Brethren to dwell together in what? Oh, wait a minute. So when we unite... Who's going to try to enter? It says it here. No, it says it here. He shall enter into the, into the place where God's united people is. That's what he's teaching. When we are united, a big push is going to be made by error 
to enter our ranks. And the Bible says, many shall be overthrown. Brethren, we should fear that. We should fear this. Because if we're not on the rock, we will be overthrown. Let us continue. Psalms 133, verses 1 and 2, we just read that. Um, verse 2 says, it is like the ointment upon what? Air upon the head of Aaron that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, and went down to the skirts of his garment. Where was that verse fulfilled? Help me, my son. No. I, you know, I don't want to say no. I don't have that understanding. I'm, looking, I'm thinking about something different. Where was this verse fulfilled? Come on. When it, when the, when it comes down the skirt, what, what, where does it fall? To the ground. Okay. Amen? Amen? The natural, naturally. Well, if you pour it on his head, it runs down his skirt of his garment, it falls to the ground. Amen? Amen? Where does Jesus place his people? Underneath his wings. When Jesus was anointed on Pentecost, where did the, where did the ointment fall? Right. To the earth. Yeah. To the and who received it? Yeah. The disciples. Yeah. All right? So a people united is a people with the Spirit of God. Amen? They are pleasant people. They are a pleasant land. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so the Bible says it is as the precious ointment. It is as Pentecost. This is talking about the Sunday law. He shall enter into the pleasant land at the Sunday law. Brethren, that's your heart. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what he's coming for. Your heart. Remember, the nations are only designed to show us what? Awesome. You, the man. One right? He's, he's coming for your heart. Go ahead, Val. I see you. So the oil trickling down is like the crumbs from the master's table. Yes. Like right. Christ receives it and it comes upon his disciples. Amen. Amen. Remember, it's Aaron and his sons that were anointed that day. So Christ and his sons were anointed that day. Amen. Amen. Let us continue. Proverbs chapter 22, verses 17 to 18. Now, man, I praise God for the way the Lord is helping us to understand the scriptures. I, I, can't, I can't praise him enough. I would have never seen those things before. How am I taking these just because it says pleasant? How am I making it the pleasant land? Because it's the spirit. It, it has nothing to do. Most people are just going to see the surface, the natural. We need to see the spiritual lesson it's teaching. Amen. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, it, it makes sense because um, the first time we, we the the first, first thing we yeah, we, yeah, excuse me the first thing we the first thing we saw was the United, United States. States yeah. So obviously the United States would have to show the um, show the United Church exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's it's obviously. all it's, it it nice. is all all the same thing. It's the United States. It's showing the United Church. Amen. So that it would have to be the the, the the same. Amen. So let us read Proverbs chapter two and verse nine. The Bible says, then shalt thou understand what? Righteousness. Righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. Right? Stand in the way and see and ask for thee. Okay, but the Bible says there is a time when we're going to understand every good path. Bring them together. Right? There is a time when God's people understand every good path, every old path. Because that's the good way. Amen? When that happens, then he could give us the new thing. But let us continue. It says, when, so he tells us when, because he says then, it's in reverse, but understand, you could reverse this, when and then. Amen? Amen? All right, so at the time when we understand every good path, the Bible says, when wisdom entereth the heart, and knowledge is pleasant to thy soul. Amen. When you are the pleasant land, you understand the good way. Amen? Amen? You've understood something about Christ because Christ says, I am the way. Amen. And it says, knowledge becomes what to thy soul? Pleasant. Pleasant. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 says, them that receive not the truth and the... Amen. Why? Because it was not pleasant to them. Right? So you become the pleasant land when knowledge, when wisdom enters the heart and knowledge is pleasant to you. Amen? Amen? Let us continue. Discretion shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. 
to deliver thee from the way of which man? The man of sin. That's what Daniel 1141 is teaching us at the Sunday law. He shall enter the glorious land. There is an error coming, brethren. And the Lord is going to allow it to come in our midst. That's what he's teaching. When that error is revealed, it's going to come into our midst. All right? Let's continue. Pleasant. Proverbs 24 and verse 3. The Bible says, Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established. And by knowledge, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and what? Pleasant riches. When did knowledge begin to increase in the earth? At the time of the end. Right? So all these verses are only taking us to the time of the end. Dan 11.40, time of the end. Dan 11.41, time of the end. Amen? Let's continue. Um, we didn't read the verse before. It says, bow down thine ear and hear the words of the what? Of the wise. And apply thine heart unto my knowledge, for it is a pleasant thing. All right? I just want to go through all that just to show that the pleasant land is you. It's you. It's your heart. You have to guard it. You have to build walls about it. Right? Because Babylon is coming to siege your city. Amen? All right, let us continue. In cleansing the temple from the world's buyers and sellers, Jesus announced his mission to do what? Cleanse the heart from the defilement of sin, from the, from the earthly desires, the selfish lust, the evil habits that corrupt the soul. The Lord whom he seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom he delight. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts, but who may abide the day of his coming, and who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like full of soap. And he shall sit as a refiner, and, a pu and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver. Now, this, this is going to be, this, by God's grace, he'll open up to us later, this real spiritual meaning of Daniel 11, 40, 41. But Daniel 11, 41, the king of the north day that's entering is also Christ. That's why I just read that. He announced his mission to do what? Cleanse the heart from every defilement. That's also Christ. When you read verse 41, it says, He shall enter into the glorious land. Christ will also enter into the pleasant land. So it's a battle there between whom? The king of the north and the? Verse 40. Yes. And verse 40 is taking place in verse 41. Everyone's following? Because the true king of the north is Christ and the true king of the south is Satan. This is what the Lord wants us to want. This is a battle for our hearts. All right? Prophecy is designed to give us a view of our hearts. Let us continue. Under the heading, spiritual or second first coming. The first time Christ came into the earth was to remove what? Sin. Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the? Sin. Okay, so when he comes into our, um, into our hearts in the latter reign of the Sunday Lord, what is he coming to do? To sin. take away the sin of the world. But this time, once and for, for good. Amen? Amen? The papacy will be destroyed. Satan will be destroyed and sin will be destroyed. All of it gone for good. Dan 11, 40 to 45 is the last battle for humanity. Let us continue. The throne of grace represents the kingdom of grace, for the existence of a throne implies the existence of a kingdom. In many of his parables, Christ uses the expression the kingdom of grace to, de to designate the work of what? Divine grace upon the hearts of men. Why am I reading that? Because when Christ enters the glorious land, when he comes the first time, what work is he always coming to do? The work of grace. When he came in the flesh, what work did he do? The work of? The work of grace. So when he comes the first time, a second time, in the spirit, what is the first work he's coming to do? 
the work of grace. The principles of God's dealing with men is ever the same. Right? So why do you think the papacy is there? I mean, Satan is there trying to make away many. Because Christ is there trying to save many. Amen? Just bring them together. Okay? I, 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 and we just have to bring them together. So right there in verse 41, we ought to see the work of grace. Amen? Amen. Romans 5 and verse 20, it says, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. For where sin abound, what? Grace, grace did much more. So where the man of sin is revealed, grace is much more revealed. Amen? Amen? Amen. That, that's what the latter reign. Christ is going to reveal his work for saving us through the, seven la to the, to the, um, to the Sunday law and the seven last plagues. Amen? Amen? Let's continue. Revelation 18, verses 1 to 5. This is what this is about. It says, And I saw... And sorry, and after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was what? Okay, in John chapter 1 and verse 14, he says, We beheld his glory full of what? Grace and truth. truth. We have to say the same thing. Amen. We behold his glory full of grace and truth. only this time, not in the flesh, but in the flesh. Amen? Yes. Amen? Not him in the flesh, but him in our flesh. Amen. We must behold that glory. Amen. That, is what, that is the work that's, that's been done to take away our sins. And in that truth, though, is the light of the setting up of the kingdom. Everyone's following? Because he's really coming to get the second crown. But he has to finish up the work that he does under the first crown. Which is taking away the sin of the world. Amen? Amen? Let us continue. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is what? And is become the habitation of, sorry, of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful. This is why Revelation 18 could be so powerful because Satan has gathered all his evil. Christ is going to gather all his good. And it's war. Good versus evil. The king of the north versus the king of the south. Amen? Amen? For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of God. Sorry, the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not what? partakers of her sin. That's the grace. Right? The grace is what calls you out. But we have to be called out first so that we can go and call out those. Right? So we must receive the grace on this side. Right? That prepare us to do that work of grace for those who didn't receive it yet. Amen? It says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Isaiah 60 and verse 1. Arise, shine. For thy light is come. He was, what did John say? He, he was not, I was, he was not, I was not that light, but I'm saying to do what? Bear what? Witness. Brethren, what did we say about the, the witness must go before the light comes? We are to bear witness to that light from now until the Sunday law. And then we have to continue to bear witness of that light from, because now it's Christ in us. So now we're going forward as Christ, bearing witness of that light by our lives Amen. and our teachings until Christ comes. Right Amen? Until he comes, who's right? It is. Amen. So, Revelation 18, the glory of the Lord is risen. She says, Revelation 18 points to the time when, as the result, as the result of rejecting the threefold warning of Revelation 14, 6 to 12. Why does it come? Okay, so the message must be taught. Amen? Amen? All right. The church will have fully reached the condition foretold by the second angel. And the people of God still in Babylon will be called upon to separate from her communion. This message is the last that will ever be given to the world. And it will accomplish its work when, when what? When. 
when those that what? Believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, shall be left to receive strong delusion to believe a lie. And I like this part. Then, so we're at the Sunday law. Amen? This is what she says. When those who believe not the truth, they begin to receive the mark of the beast. Amen? She says then, at the same time, then the light of truth, the what? Arise, shine for thy the light of truth will shine upon all whose hearts are open to receive it. And the children of the Lord that remain in Babylon, which means there are some people that's already out. Amen? Amen. It says, will heed the call, come out of her, my people. Verse 42. This is all verse 41. Revelation 18 is Daniel 11. And verse 41. But it's also 41 all the way down to 45. Right? Because it's about the destruction of the whore. Amen? Amen. All right. Verse 42 says, He shall stretch his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. I, I was supposed to take that out. <laughs> don't, don't read atheism. I don't, I don't understand that yet. That, that was a thought I was having last night, and I put it in there. I, I don't understand it. So it says, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly make away what? Many. Now, um, pray for me. I want to explain this properly. In Daniel 11 and verse 41, it says... The man of sin was going to make away what? Many. He shall enter into the glorious land and what? Many shall be overthrown. overthrown. Right? Then it says he shall enter into the countries and the land of Egypt. All right? And in the natural, we teach that Egypt here is the world. So first America followed by the, the world. Right? And Ellen White says, I saw two groups, the church and the world. So first he enters into the church, those people who is pleasant, and then he goes to the? World, amen. I mean, we could see that 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 uh, parallel, amen. All right, but now you come down to verse forty-four, and it says, "It says, but he shall have treasure." What does it say? But, right? And then you come to verse forty-four, and it says, "But tidings." Why, but? While he's going forth to make away many. The tidings of the east is going to trouble him. This is why the writer says, but, as he's making away many, but the tidings shall trouble him. Which means the tidings is going forth from the beginning. Right? So I know there is a, 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 a chronological aspect to this, these texts, which we must understand. But I want us to see it if when we're dealing with sin, the man of sin, this tidings goes forth right there from the beginning. Right there. Arise, shine for thy light is come. Cry aloud, spear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, right? Show my people their transgression in the house of Jacob their sins. Right there. That light. The tidings. What is tidings? Let us read. Romans 10 and verse 15. Because it says, it says um, because of the tidings he shall go forth to make away what? Many, and the Bible says he shall enter, and what? Many shall be overthrown. It's what we teach that moves him to go that route. When Christ, when Christ came riding on the ass, what direction did the Pharisees go? They went to utterly make away with him. Away with this man. Give us Barabbas. It's the same thing. When we teach the truth, what we're, in, you know, I don't know if you all know this, but as Kunal has been teaching, he has not feared to say, this is Rome. This is the Pope. This is the papacy. This is Protestant. Brethren, that is a taste of the tidings. Because no, not only will you say this is the papacy, you will say, this is Mr. So-and-so. If it's not said that way, it won't trouble. Exactly. This is President So-and-so. This is this CEO over there. This is, and you will say that man is evil and he's going to die. And brethren, they are going to be mad. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. That was Herodias. Until Herodias was pointed out, she was in trouble. Amen. Until Jezebel, Jezebel was pointed out, she was yes. in trouble. Amen. So nice we, we have to call sin by his name. Where Amen. Whoever wears that sin, you must call their name, and they will be troubled. Amen. Because popery is the religion of the, of the heart. So when you, attack, when you call these names, what are you calling? You're calling out popery. You're calling out the king of the north. That's what you're doing. Those tidings, man, when we start preaching the message the way it should preach, brethren, but praise God, because Christ is going to send light. He's going to come. Because the Bible says, the king of the north comes back with chariots and with horsemen and with what? Many ships. That's Christ, brethren. That's Christ. And by God's grace, we'll get to those spiritual applications of these things, right? For now, he's giving us a little taste. And I praise God for what he's given us. I, I, I really appreciate this. All right? And I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice is appreciating this as well. Amen. The Lord is working to save us. Amen. All right? So let us continue. Romans 10 and verse 15. It says, And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the what? Gospel of peace that bring glad what? Tidings of good things or pleasant things. Amen? That's what's going forth, in fact, from now to serve, but, but the fulfillment of Daniel 11 40, 41 is the Sunday law. So, right there, we take verse 44, put it back up on top, verse 41. It's happening. Everyone's following? It's happening together. All right? Um, Isaiah 57, 52 and verse 7, the Bible says, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth what? Salvation. The Bible says, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our God, of our Lord. And of his Christ, right? Praise God. So that that this is right here. So it says. Good tidings that publisheth what? Salvation. So salvation will be published here at the Sunday law. Amen? Saying unto Zion, thy God what? Reign it. Why does it have to say that? Because John says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. That's the message. That's what we're teaching because there is a man here sitting in the seat of God claiming that he what? Is God. So what is our message? What is the tidings? Thy God reigneth. Reigneth where? He's about to receive the kingdom. So what are we preaching? We, God's people is going to know the future. So we preach like it happened already. Amen. So let's continue. Thy watchmen shall what? Lift the voice. With the voice how? Together shall they sing. For they shall see what? Eye to eye. They shall be the pleasant land. Amen. Those who teach the gospel of peace is the pleasant land. Amen. The gospel comes from the pleasant land. Amen. That's why he enters the pleasant land. Yes. But as he comes, who comes to our defense? Christ with chariots, with horsemen, and with many ships. Let us continue. Why will not Protestants see that popery is the natural religion of every heart? And the only way to put it down is to do what? Preach the gospel. That can save both professed, um, professed Protestants and Catholics from the papal spirit that has been in this country since 1989. Let us continue. Acts of the Apostles, 96 paragraph 1, it says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. As in all churches of the saints, he requires that what? Order and system be observed in the conduct of, the, of church affairs today, no less than in the days of old. He desires his work to be carried forward with, with a thoroughness 
and exactness so that he may place upon it what? The seal of his approval. That's the Sunday law. He's looking for that movement. Amen? Christian is to be united with? Christian. Church with? Church. The human instrumentality cooperating with the? Divine. Every agency subordinate to the holy what? Spirit. And all combine in giving the world the good tidings of the grace of Christ. That's what we're going to do at the Sunday law. When we get to that point, God's church will be so united. And then where sin abound, grace much more abound. abound. And from that moment on to the rest of the world, we're teaching there is grace sufficient for you. Amen? Let's continue. But we must know now that there is grace sufficient for us. Amen? If we want to be a part of that people who's lifting the banner, a part of that church, right? The pillar and ground of truth. Like Kunal went over last night. If we want to be a part of that church, we must see His grace now. And we must make right now. If we're understanding these things about the time of the end, we must be the people in verse 32 of verse 31 that do know their God and do exploits and that trouble Him. It's only a repeat of those verses. They troubled Him, He went to kill them. Verse 41, what does it say? They trouble Him, He goes to kill them. But the Bible says he could only do this until the time of the until the time of the end. And at that time shall Michael. Let us continue. Verse 45. And he shall plant his tabernacles, plural. He has a lot of error. He shall plant his tabernacles, the tabernacles of his palace, between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and what? None shall help him. Brethren, the victory is already won. Right? We just have to make sure that we're on the right side of history. Let us continue. Revelation 6, verses 7 and 8. 7 and 8. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard a voice of the fourth beast say what? What is that, um, this, this phrase, come and see, uh, attached to? The heavens open. Amen? Come and see. Right? And you shall see angels, what? Ascending and? Okay. And Daniel says, now I will know the truth about the fourth beast. Who came down from heaven to give it to him? An angel. Heaven opened. Angels came, ascend and descend. Gabriel came to Daniel how many times? A myriad of times. Chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, right? Heaven opened and angels ascend and descend upon Daniel. Amen? And he knew the truth about the fourth beast. Right? We are that. At the end of the Bible says, at the time of the end, Daniel shall stand in his lot. We are the Daniels at the end. Amen? Amen. So it says plainly here that when that seal is open, it says, come and see. Now I'm taking the principle, not the prophecy. Okay? This was fulfilled back then. All right? It says, and I looked, and upon the pale horse, his name that sat upon him was what? Death, and what followed him? Okay, take this principle to the Sunday law. When the man of sin rises up, death and hell follows him. Amen? Mm -hmm. So let's continue. Drop down to verse 7 and verse 28. What should be our reaction? I believe it's in the... I don't know if it's... I think it was last Sabbath or two Sabbaths ago, Kuna talked about the right cry. Y'all remember that? Mm -hmm. The right cry brings the right response. Amen? So what is the right cry when death sits upon the horse? Romans 7 and verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? That's the cry. Amen? But what's the answer? And at that time, shall what? Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such, such as never was, since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time shall the people be what? There's our deliverance, brethren. Daniel 11, 40 to 45 teaches us how we are going to be delivered. Everyone's following? Amen. 
But we must have the right cry. The right tidings from the east must come. The right tidings from the north must come. And this north and east is nice. When, when, but praise, when you go through it, man, that, that, that north and that east is nice. Brethren, it was my burden that we see ourselves in Scripture. The Bible says, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do thy will. O oh Lord, yea, thy what? Law is written upon okay, Brother Wesley, when you read that text, who should you think about? Yeah, that's a good answer. That's, that's a good answer, but that's, that's not our focus for today. Who should we think about? Ourselves. What does it say? In the volume of the book, it is written of who? Mm. Wesley. Mm. That's what the text is teaching. Yeah. In the volume of the book, it is written of you, Emily. That's what it's teaching. It is written of Saniron. It is written of Canard. It is written of Rochelle. It is written of me. It is written of you watching online. You are in the scriptures. And Revelation 18 is a revelation of you. And what is about to come upon you. And that the papacy is about to enter into you. But Christ is also about to enter into you. Because the Bible says he lighted some men who cometh into the world. No, all men is going to receive the light of Christ here at the Sunday law. All men. And it is up to you to say, this is my God. It is up to you to say, thou art the Christ. It is up to you. If not, you will look at the papacy and say, thou art the Christ. That's your choice, one or the other. So when I began, I started by showing Ezekiel. This image. And on this image, it says, I will overthrow Babylon. That's you. Something in you has Babylonish principles. He says, I will overthrow your false religion and worldliness. That's what Babylon was, that head of gold. Then he comes, he says, I will overthrow the Medes and the Persians. I will overthrow those false laws that you made up. Those laws that keeps you in bondage. And those laws that you use to throw men in the lion's den. That's what he's saying. Then he says, I will overturn your foolish doctrine. Your, 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 your nonsense education. And then he says, when that happens, I will come. Because now I have right. But when he comes, who rises up? The beast that combines the bad religion, the stupid laws, and the foolish education. That's the final battle. The threefold union. That beast rises up in your heart. Right now, that's what we are removing. Worldliness, foolish laws, and stupid doctrine. Right? But brethren... Satan is not going down that easy. He's going to combine those things and he's going to bring it upon you in a force that you've never seen before. But, the, but we have to know that when he does that, it's the time for the person who's right. It is. And if we know that, then we have to open our hearts to receive Christ, brethren. Christ. He's coming and um, she says, justification by faith is the work of God in, in, in humbling man into the dust and doing that for him, which he cannot do for him. We don't know how to deal with the powers when they combine. So who comes to deal with it? He who's right, it is. Let us give him rights to our heart. This is what this message is about. It's about the heart. It's about you putting away sin and becoming like the stature of Christ. Amen? Amen. And to, those, to, 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 to everyone, as those watching online, I know you hear God's voice. I know that, that generally the, 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 the thought is if you hear God's voice, but I know you hear God's voice. Because we, for a certainty, I know 
that these things are true. And the Bible says, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. We encourage you to partner with us in giving the gospel at the end of the world. As my brother Kennard appealed last night, I would like to extend that appeal. Join us in this movement. This is the movement of truth. Now, does that say that God don't have people around the world who is teaching the truth? That does not say that. But what it does say is that you're here today because this is the group that you found. Amen. Amen. And if you hear God's voice, we encourage you to join with us in the furtherance of the gospel. We have some, um, some, some, some things in the works, some trips coming up that we have to undertake. And by God's grace, we need the support of everyone to help us to do this work. All right? And we encourage you to join in this work. We encourage you to support us and to help us as we further the gospel. This is the final movement. The Bible says we are living in the time of the end. Shall we close in prayer? Merciful, gracious, and loving Father, we, we, we thank you so much, Lord, for giving us just a little more uh, insight, Lord, into the end of the world, into, Lord, those, those texts from Daniel 11, 40 to 45. And we thank you, Lord, that it is designed to show our evil hearts, Lord. And so we just want to, each one of us on the sound of my voice, so surrender our hearts to you at this hour. Lord, we ask that you will come into our hearts, O oh Lord, for, for you have right in this place. You have right in this heart of ours, O oh Lord, for you created us, and you own us, O oh Lord, by creation and redemption. So we pray, O oh Lord, that the hearts of everyone here will be subdued. We pray, O oh Lord, that each one of us here will surrender fully and totally to you, recognizing the time we are living in, recognizing the work that needs to be done at this hour, Lord. The close of probation is soon coming, and so we pray that you'll give us the urgency that we need to go forward with the work in which you'll have us do at the end of the world. Forgive me. Forgive each and every one here, Lord, who is under the sound of my voice, where we have failed you in the past, O oh Lord. And may, may this, the, this message, these messages, be united, calculated, Lord, to unite us and to, to give us that zeal that we need to go forward in the work of the gospel. We thank you, and we ask these prayer in none other name than your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.